Well, I've got something cool, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I couldn't find my calculator the other day. Uh, I've misplaced it and I thought, well, it's a solar powered one anyway, and it's a bit, I've got autofocus on, sorry, this might annoy some people, but it's, um, it's a bit subject to how much light I've got. So, and sometimes it's a bit washed out and difficult to read. So I picked up a new calculator. <laughs> And when I say new, um, I don't mean new, I mean old. Uh, so this is a Rapidman 800 calculator. This one came out in 1972. It was one of the very first very cheap calculators. So this one's like a, an all-in-one plastic molded calculator. So these keys are attached to the actual mold here. So you can see, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can zoom in. Maybe you can see that, it's very difficult. So just here, uh, the actual key fits onto this plastic row here and the bottom half of it is not connected. So you can see that there's a top bit that's green, the bottom bit it's clear. So that's actually connected to there. So there's a button pad underneath. And I wanted to show you this. Uh, it's just got on off switch there, none of this solar powered rubbish. Let's zoom back out again, shall we? So I wanted to show you it working. However, there's a problem. Um, so I don't know if it works. I wasn't able to turn it on. Um, it comes with these cool operating instructions. It's got a serial number here as well. Now, I know it was made in 1972, or at least that's when they came out. Um, I don't know about this one specifically, uh, but this one doesn't work, and I'm just going to show you why. So let's flip that top bit open. This again is, uh, is molded through, so that hinge is part of the plastic mold. Now, this is why it doesn't work, is this cable here is... Uh, is gone basically. So I'm going to take this apart and we're going to replace it with one that I have with a barrel jack on it. So I'm just going to cut that barrel jack off and hopefully solder on some new cables onto there. Um, it looks a little bit crusty as well, doesn't it? So we'll just get rid of it. So let's uh, swap the bit out and we'll unscrew the case. Now you might wonder why I bothered to pick up an old calculator rather than buy something new. Well, I like old stuff and um, I intend to use it. So I thought it'd be nice just to keep something around that's old uh, and use it. I don't use my other calculator, which is, what's the expression Dave says? Dave Jones says something, it's like four, four it's a four function calculator. I can't remember the expression, um, but basically it's uh, plus minus times and divide and that's those are the functions that are available so it's really easy to use and that's all I do mostly so let's see if we can now take this apart I don't think there are any screws I hope not hidden under there no that seems to be it there's a clip there I want to be very careful here I will just use my nails I don't know how careful I'm gonna to have to be right I'm gonna pause here and then come back Okay, so uh, it actually, the whole case is molded together. So this is a, a lid, I guess. So that's, that's pretty easy. I need to get on the other side of the board though. You can see here, these are sort of hand drawn tracks there. So I need to unscrew some more things here. So we've got, I'm trying to look on the camera because I can't see this. So there's a screw up there. Let's take that one out. In fact, where are those other screws? I know those are for the top, so let's put those to one side. I'll try and keep these in the appropriate positions. Old plastic tends to give way after a while, and I want to make sure they're going to go right back into the same place. That's not going to come out. It's just sort of spinning around. Hopefully it's just going to lift out. Now I'm anticipating this being a relatively easy fix. I think it did say it was working on the eBay listing, but um, it may have uh, gotten sort of knocked about in transit maybe. And that's why that wire's finally given way. No, they're just spinning around. So hopefully I can just uh, take this out now. Mm. Scary. Oh, there we go. Oh my word. So this is the, look at the display. 
That's incredible. So that's uh, that's how they're all molded in. That's brilliant. I've got a little display there. I might do a little bit of cleaning while I'm in here. And there's a little light pipe there to a uh, tiny little LED that's on the board there. Let's uh, just come in a bit closer on these uh, LEDs. You gonna focus? Well, that's kind of focused. Wow. They are cool. Okay, so we've got our buttons here. These are just sort of metal domed buttons. And um, those ones don't do anything. What's on those? Those ones don't have domes. Ah, I see. So the switch there is the power switch. And that's on a dome as well. So it pushes that, uh, that dome there. And that is the power switch. So that just holds down when it's powered on. Interesting. This is our power coming over here and it goes into a jumble of wires over here. I'm never going to use the DC input jack, which is just there. Let's see if we can't lift this board up. It appears to be taped on with some crusty old tape. I can't really take it out too much more than that. Let's see if I can bend it a little bit without breaking anything. No, I don't appear to have broken anything. Let's zoom in so you can have a little look at that. That looks like a Moztec chip to me. I'll have to flip this round for you, but uh, yeah. There's a Moztec chip. Look at all of those components. This is beautiful. So this is, it was one of the first. It isn't the first. So I think the first single chip uh, calculator came out in 1971. It was like a busman or something businessman or something like that. Anyway, this was very close afterwards with the Moztec chips. So absolutely beautiful. I really hope this works. Let's make sure we can get the power out and then uh, I'll get the uh, soldering started. But look at that. Actually, rather brilliantly, this came with the manual, um, the operating instructions. <laughs> so um, it says your rapid man pocket size calculator is well constructed instrument which will be with normal care and use given many years of trouble free performance uh, and it carries a one year parts and labor guarantee. So this came out in 1972 which makes it what 35 years old now so I think that's probably out of date now. Uh, what have we got? Your rapid man 800 makes use of the smallest single chip large scale integration LED light emitting diode display technology. That is uh, this thing here. A unique snap action keyboard. It doesn't actually feel great, but I like the, uh, the sound it makes. The convenience of a throwaway battery provides you with absolute freedom from time consuming recharging operations. <laughs> okay. Right, okay, let's have a quick scan through and if it says anything about okay battery operation okay ac operation what's that ac jack doing while connected to ac the internal battery is automatically disconnected no it isn't there are only two power wires here Unless there's some kind of switching component inside this jack, perhaps it disconnects one of the power wires, but they both appear. <laughs> oh no, they go to different jacks. Okay, well maybe it does, but it doesn't seem like there's a diode or anything in there. So anyway, I'll undo these and uh, we'll take a look. But um, there are some, <laughs> some little examples to go through so you can learn how to use your calculator. So. Once we've got it working again, we might go through that. Okay, so the soldering iron is up to temperature and I've identified where the red lead goes from the battery, which is this one here. So we're gonna take that one off first. I might need to flow some solder onto that just to loosen up that 35 year old solder. Yeah, I do, gosh. Just hold it there a little bit. There might actually be a... Right, I'm sort of precariously holding it. <laughs> wrapping the wire around my finger and hoping that um, this is going to work. But it's going to heat up that solder there. Ah, good. It did work. 
And we're just going to tack on the new one. I'm not worried about putting it through the holes. This isn't going to see a lot of um, action, as it were. So we've got the new one there. I need to tin up those leads a little bit. Let's get rid of the ground wire. Actually, we'll put the red on first so that we don't get confused with other ones. So let's just tin that up. And give them a little twist. There we go. That will do. A little bit of fresh solder on there. That's good enough. And then our ground, where is that? Okay, so the ground is shared. And that is over here. So let's pull that through. Grotty, horrible wire. Both of these grounds are going to come off now, aren't they? <laughs> so again, we're going to have to flow a little bit of new solder onto there. Okay, that's good. Now to try and yank off the bad ground. the bad ground gone and now we just need to solder the new one on looks like that other one's through the the hole on there so that's good I realize this isn't actually a very interesting video so sorry but um, it'll be more interesting when it works I guess uh, you guys know how I like my old technology so it is uh, it could do with being a little bit shorter it is um, it's kind of exciting for me just to see this old thing work again. If it, if indeed it does, I mean, I don't really know that it's going to work, but just take that on. There we go. It's a fairly good connection. Now this was twisted a little bit, so let's twist it back up. Um, I actually, I ordered two calculators from eBay because I wasn't sure which one I was going to win. And um, one of them looked really cool. So I was bidding on two Commodore calculators. I can't remember what that 768M rings a bell. And um, one of them was blue. And boy, oh boy, did that look cool. So uh, I bid on that one uh, and lost it, unfortunately. And then uh, I won another one, which was black. So... Um, that's the one that's going to come in the post soon. So we're going to have another vintage calculator by accident. Still, it's better than no vintage calculators. And this is just sort of press fit back together. And I shan't put those screws in just yet. Oh, no, I will. They're just here. They don't prevent the battery from going in or anything. So let's pop those ones back in. They've got kind of a green mask on them which is odd. I've never seen that kind of um, corrosion before, but uh, it has it on there. Now the green Rapid Man apparently is slightly more rare than the black one that came out. So hopefully this is going to be okay. So battery in the right orientation. Hopefully it's just going to slide in. It's not actually got a lot of room there. Well, we're going to have to hold it like that and come back to fitting it properly. Let's turn it on. No, I'll turn it back off. I'll just check that battery with the multimeter. Yeah, 9.54 volts. So that should be fine. So something else is wrong, I think. Yeah, we're getting nothing there. This is 
this is going to be a bit more difficult. I might have to read the eBay listing and see whether it said it worked or not. That is a shame. Well, at least we've got the Commodore one coming, which you'll see at some point. But for now, I'm not going to go any further into this. I'm going to open it up again and have a little poke around and see what I can find. Uh, if you've got any ideas, do let me know. I just left it in the worst possible place because I decided to play around a little bit more. So I've resoldered a lot of the pins that looked a little bit dry. So just in case it was a dry joint uh, or one that just wasn't connecting very well. Well, I've got, let's, I'm poking around on the power pins here. So I've got my 9.53 or 5.2 volts. Now, if I just uh, angle my way to push the switch, if I can do this. Yeah, okay. And then I measure that power pin again. We're getting 1.1756. So it's, there's a short somewhere or something that's uh, drawing lots and lots of power and pulling that down to one volt. Um, I can't find anything that's getting hot on the board though. So I don't know what is going on. I haven't got a clue. It's very frustrating. Uh, I've been, in fact, let's just, before I mess around two more, I'll just unplug that battery. So I've uh, I've soldered a lot, resoldered a lot of these on the um, on the back here, uh, just along here, the main connections. I've looked for anything that might have bridged. I can't see anything that's bridged unintentionally, uh, and I I can't imagine anyone's been poking around with the soldering iron in here for many many years. So it could be a I don't know a resistor that's just gone kaput maybe maybe it's just I don't know do they break that way <laughs> a diode is that can they just go short circuit I mean I don't even know what these are are they capacitors we've got some diodes here old-fashioned style diodes I think those are I don't know it's entirely possible but yeah, I don't have a clue really. So if anyone's got any insight, that would be fantastic. But it is beautiful, isn't it? I just wish it worked. Still, we've got that Commodore one coming. So I'm gonna hold off on doing any more with this unless someone, well, if someone's got any ideas, uh, I mean, it could be that the MozTech chip has just gone um, and there's no point even trying, but I would love to be able to fix it. Ah, oh, what a shame. It was gonna be so cool.